Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and, and this is You've Got Five Options show. And we welcome you uh, yet again with a very interesting spin on our intro. This time you could hear it twice. I, I think it's uh, also a progress, but guys, I think you are totally used to the fact that, you know, we, we have a very unique way of introducing ourselves every single time we go live. Uh, so yes, this is Anna and Marta. And we have a special guest today, like every Friday where when we have a live show, uh, we have today with us Fatema <laughs> Barot Mota. Was that even remotely correct? I think that is right. Okay, pe- perfect. So today we have Fatima and we will have a really interesting show called The Universe Falls in Love with a Courageous Heart. And uh, we came up with this title because we actually had Fatima here in, in a studio as our expert talking about presentation and how to make a captivating presentation. But when Fatima was applying to our radio show, she actually shared her own personal story And the story uh, was so good that we thought, okay, she has to also come live on the live show. So here you are today, Fatima. And please tell us, what did you share? Do you remember what you shared (laughs) that actually captivated our attention? I think so. Yeah, I met Anna at uh, another event and I was very happy to uh, have encountered her. And uh, I think I, I I, I wasn't sure what uh what what is it that you would include in your radio show so just out of my uh out of my intention of introducing myself and telling you about who i am and what i do etc i just kind of put this link yes. uh, with instagram that had my story and surprisingly it caught your attention and then you thought it was worthy enough to turn it into an, a one hour live show on radio so thank you I you are <laughs> very welcome uh, yeah because uh, as you all know we have an application on our website when everyone who would like to be our guest can just click in fill in application send it to us and of course who will get back to you and talk about being our guest on the radio. So uh, when I met Fatima in person, I was like, listen, it would be great if you would come and talk about presentation and Pecha Kucha because that is, and you have to listen to that show as well. It was really great. And then she filled in an application and she wrote, yeah, you wrote that you moved to Denmark from India and this was a huge and fascinating change for you. And you love to, you would love to share that story. And then I went on your Instagram link. That is another, uh, another another thing I would like to talk about later. And I read that story and I was, uh, oh my God, <laughs> it, it really is great. Yeah. So, and I, I will just tell that what struck me was your courage in making decisions. And, and I think it's really worthy topic to talk about courage, especially when you have to have courage against not only yourself and your own beliefs, but maybe the culture you live in, maybe the family or some sort of conditioning. And I think that is a very worthy topic to talk about. Marta, what do you think? I concur. <laughs> you concur. And I am so much looking forward to being a part of this uh, show. And since I already am, so that's good for me. Yes, that's a good start, Marta, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> So Fatima, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, okay, so we know you are from India and you right. arrived to Denmark. So I know the story, <laughs> but I would love to hear it with your own words. Sure. I think I think first and foremost, I am also just an ordinary person like you, every f- each one of you who is uh, listening on uh, live. So although I, I, this is positioned as me being courageous and all of that, I just want to put it out there firsthand that I'm just a normal person just as vulnerable and in self-doubt and self-conscious. And I was very self-conscious about really talking about this as, you know, my story and something that should be out there and that should inspire people. So actually, even that Instagram link is uh, something that was featured by another 
another website. It's not me because I'm kind of very self-conscious. Like, why is my wor- my why why should why is my story any more <laughs> worthy listening than others? Because I know a lot of people who go through much harder times and situations in life. But at the same time, I think one of the when when inspire young youth, young India. I think I have a friend who kind of endorses that brand that kind of inspires and encourages uh, young people in India, uh, helping them on, you know, babies, basically preparing them for life. Mm-hmm. And they asked me if they were, could feature my story as inspiration. And at that time, I was like, whoa, okay, putting my story out there, really, like, do I want to do that? I mean, it's a personal thing. Well, uh, my heart is beating fast, because right now I'm li- live on radio doing this. But the fact being that I, I had, I reflected on this, and then I understood that what inspires me, and when I ask myself, it is people around me and their stories. And of course, we all have our icons and idols, but it's a lot of people that I know in my real life, my friends, family, or just random people that I meet, sometimes that inspire me with that story. And that kind of gave me the comfort that maybe it's okay to put your story out there because maybe somebody relates to it. And uh, yeah, so it's just to say that my story is probably just like any other story out there. So I'm happy to share um, what I experienced in life. And in a nutshell, I think life has kept surprising me. Uh, There are so many twists and turns that kind of test you all the time. And uh, I'm a reflective person. And I think that choice is a big thing. Uh, Every time you have to take a choice, it it demands thought, it demands courage, it demands a lot. And uh, every time you choose, you don't choose something else. So, and if you, if, you just, if you just leave it, then by that also you're already making a choice. So there's a lot that happens in that journey. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting point of view. By not making a choice, you are making a choice. Yeah. And I think that many people don't really uh, see it that way. So today I have a day when people really make observations that that really are like wow you can look at this in a completely different way but yeah that that's true when you send us this link with the story i've seen that it was not an instagram instagram story from your private account it was actually inspire young india that's right and i think the funny thing is that many times we go through a lot of different experiences in our lives and then we talk to someone about it. And for, for us, it becomes so normal. Yes. Because that, that's our life. Yes. Yeah, you know, okay, I struggled here and there, but then I got out of it and then I did this or that. And someone can just listen to you and say, oh my God, wow, you know, this is really brave or this is really inspirational. Oh, wow, you really had courage. And maybe only then we can actually reflect back and see, okay, Actually, what I did was awesome. So I think there is a chance that this is how we see you. (laughs) But you, as you, you. are unable to to fully grasp it. And I think that this is uh, one of those beauties of of, of those stories that, you know, you, you, you say them and then people make out of them what they feel or need. Right. So sometimes you are, of course, out of the control right. of your own story right. or actually the impact that your story will make. But uh, Fatima, so if I understood correctly, you were born and raised in India. And how your life looked back then there? So it's interesting. I grew up in this small town. My town will be proud that I'm uh, mentioning it on a live radio in Denmark, but it's called Bhavandi. And okay. it's right outside Mumbai. And it's a small town. Very young town, but something that was growing organically very fast, but a very conservative town and a very trader, trader mindset town. So professionalism and education, although they are prevalent, it was still, you know, at its early stages of getting evolved. It was just about 50 kilometers from Mumbai. So not very far from a big city, but in mindset, I think it was, at least when I was growing up, it had a lot to catch up. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in a society that was extremely conservative and very suppressing of women, especially. Okay. So just just to give an example, when I was really young, it would be very common to hear that, oh, because you're a girl, you cannot go out and play cricket. Okay. You can't be seen in a playground, you know, jumping around just because you're a girl. Or after you're 12, you cannot, you shouldn't wear a frock that's not covering your knees and things like that. Okay. But again, it was a society where I was not surrounded by empowering women. And in my own house, I grew up in a joint family and all the women were housewives. 
and I have great respects for them. They did a massive job in keeping my family together, so not that I look down upon that at all. But uh, I think women empowerment was not something, it, it was a very, it's a very patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. But I think I was very lucky that my parents and my family were extremely open-minded. Okay. Even though I was growing up in this closed mindset at place, I think they always made me realize that there's a world out there. So even if I was not getting that stimulus or inspiration from my immediate surroundings, I think I was shown stories or books or uh, being taken to places just just so that I was aware that I might be in a well, but hey, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. And I think education was, of course, very important. So, you know, my, the, my school that I grew that I studied in was like uh, the place I enjoyed the most because that was my playground. <laughs> I okay. didn't have a playground outside, but school was my playground. And the stage in school was the place I loved. So I would be participating in every competition, left, right, center, because I did not have things outside. Mm -hmm. And my parents were always encouraging, like, yeah, go ahead. They would come and appreciate every performance I did. And I think uh, you would be surprised if you had to come and visit how I grew up, where I grew up. But if it was not the right environment set for me, it would be different. Okay. That's... And, uh, that's that that is something that we did not have in your in your yeah. Instagram story. Actually, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even go, got the connection. Of course, we know that India is a country of some very yes. um, specific traditions and a culture, but that I didn't know. So this is actually quite quite something. But then you chose an education and you went for you actually changed it a couple of times, right? Yes, actually. So I was this one super sincere student, and education is a big priority in India and mm -hmm. it comes down to sheer basics because we are such a huge population that opportunities and quality of life really depend on how good an education did you get, how good a job did you land in, that dis determines the quality of your life. It's as simple as that. And therefore, no, there's no, there's no surprise that all parents want their kids to get the best education, to land in the best jobs, and then get a better life. And so every we are like under pressure, uh, so to say, it, like to perform all the time. And in the beginning, I was a super mischievous kid, like somebody who would not b want to sit down in classes of maths and history and science and all of that. But I think then I, then I understood that, OK, this is the environment I am in. And even as a child, I convinced myself that I need to become sincere and I need to study. And so much that I became so sincere in school and such a good kid <laughs> that uh, I topped in school. So, okay. and, and when I say topped in school, I was in a classroom of 70 and 80 kids and we had three divisions. So that made a lot of pupil yeah. every grade. It was not like the 20, 30 kids you have here in school. So it, it, made, it was a great, it was a big deal. And that said, of course, that naturally meant that I should get into becoming an accountant or an engineer or a doctor, and I loved arts and craft. Mm -hmm. And people are like, but that's what people do when you're not good at studies. And to my, to my brain, it was just not, it just didn't make sense. But because I could, do st I could study, I'm sincere. I, I had cultivated discipline enough to do it if I had to. But again, I would give credit to my parents because they are like, okay, we know you're a very sincere and uh, talented kid. But we see you enjoying the most when you're drawing. Because I was lost. Mm -hmm. Even now, like, I'm such a restless person. But when I draw, I forget. I lose sense of time and place. That's how. And I'm so happy that then my parents uh, consented me to get an education in applied arts. So I went to Mumbai. I studied uh, four years in applied arts and then two years where I studied uh, Master of Design. Okay. I, I have to say that there is one thing about, you know, the environment around you and the other one about the family that you have. And I'm thinking, listening to your story, what if your parents would not be supportive? That is the very first thought yeah. that comes to my mind. Yeah. Because, you know, to fight with the uh, some kind of an environment and with your family, right. that is that is quite a lot. So it is. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> to you for having such Thank a you. fantastic uh, parents Thank but but then again you uh, you came arrived here and how did that happen weren't you happy in india <laughs> <laughs> no i think i was uh, i definitely was happy in india but uh, the story of course has been linear so far but it 
life doesn't happen linearly necessarily. So although I had the most support of my parents and my family in most things, social conditioning does play a role. It did influence me and also my family. So at the age of 20, I was engaged uh, okay. through like, you know, a distant family relationship. And, and that was just because that was how I was conditioned to believe that, okay, this is how things are supposed to be. I was asked for consent. It was not that we want you to get married to this. I was uh, asked for consent, to, so I take a huge responsibility. I was involved in the decision making, but I was naive. I was not ready for it, but I said a yes, and it was a wonderful person and a wonderful family that I was engaged with. But it was it was some time later that I understood that I had not understood how big how big and important this decision is, and uh, about. Two, two and a half, I, I don't even remember, one and a half year, two years later, I decided to call it off. And uh, that broke me a lot. It took like massive courage because I think your family is upset with you. And this other person that I was engaged to and the family, they were one of the most beautiful people I know. But imagine the amount of guilt I had on my shoulders for affecting and hurting them. But at that time, just inside me, I knew internally that this is just not, this doesn't feel right. I'm not doing the right thing for myself and that will affect the other person's life. In the end, I was still like 22 or something, but you just know when it's not right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when, uh, you know, social conditioning, I, I realized what social conditioning is because until then you don't even know what you're influenced by. So it was almost like pressing a reset button. And then suddenly a lot of things that you have uh, grown up believing are gone they and crumble, you're like yeah. wow like who am I now so if all these things that kind of define who I am and what I should be and what I'm supposed to be who am I now and then it didn't end there because uh, after my education I took to Goa for work and uh, and then at Goa uh, at my workplace is where I met my husband and he comes from a different community okay. uh, than I do so I grew up uh, in a Muslim uh, in a Muslim society, in a Muslim family, and my husband's a Christian. <laughs> okay, uh, isn't that like a yeah. big no-go? It is. It is. <laughs> okay. It is. And uh, that said, uh, I mean, even touching this topic, I have huge respect, first of all, for religious sentiment and ideas. I am not, I haven't stepped away from it. Uh, so just by marrying a person from a different religion, I have not, I, in my opinion, I haven't given up my religion. And it's not like I have disrespect in my husband's religion. For me, it's a beautiful thing because by being open and embracing another religion, I have only found out how many things are common Yeah, between the two. So for me, it was like, you know, uh, more than one door to the same destination. But uh, that said, I mean, society works differently. We are communities, we are tribes. We like to make people stick together. So my community dispelled me. I'm not allowed in there anymore. Really? Um, yes. And okay. uh, I think, uh, so, you know, I, once you break out of your shell, it's like step by step. But I think it was difficult. Uh, it wasn't easy. And I wouldn't say I was being rebellious for the sake of being rebellious. I think that's a stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's being too self-centered because I do respect society. I do respect community. And I do respect family and all of that. Those things help you have a moral compass. So it's not like I have, you know, rejected those things always, but it has always been this conflict between what do I feel is right, uh, the right thing to do. And for me, in my head, if I find a person who is uh, genuinely likable and who I, f who I feel uh, I get a lot sharing my life with, I feel, why should I not consider that option just because I was born in a family that has been following a certain relig religion versus that religion? like. Was it my choice and that person's choice? Like, what's happening here? And uh, I know it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray in between. And uh, it's a very personal opinion. So no offense to anybody who wants to respect and, you know, by choice, uh, you know, for whom it is important that, no, I need to marry a person who has the same faith as I do. I totally respect that. But at least for me, in my head at that time, I just felt like it's another human being. How can I... How can I not consider one person versus the other? And at that time, it was a big, uh, it was a big uh, task. And at the same time, I, I'm a very family person. 
So going against my family was extremely, uh, was not something uh, I would consider doing. Uh, so, you know, it was not, it was definitely not something my family wished for. <laughs> they were concerned. Yeah. But more than, you know, religious reason, reasons, it was more like you're going into an unfamiliar culture. We worry about you. Will you be all right? And I totally understand that from parents' point of view. So it took a lot of convincing. I wouldn't call it fighting. Uh, I think it took a lot of dialogue. It took a lot of being open for me. And then for my, because it happened in stages. I have, for example, in the beginning, uh, when I was in college, I have, uh, le like say, had a crush on someone, but I would never consider mm -hmm. a relationship just because I was conditioned to think this is not possible, so don't even go there. And then I had to break that shell for myself. And then that shell broke for my family. And still my grandmother was super upset with me when I got <laughs> married. But then that took some time for her to realize that, okay, this is not as important, et cetera, et cetera. And some people are still madly upset with me about it. But that, that's how it is. And I don't know if I took a right decision or wrong, but it's, it's not black and white. That's where I feel choice is uh, something that really guides you. But at the same time, you can hear that we as people evolve. Um, so I think what I have tried to do is be open. I'm not sure I was aware that now I'm being courageous, now I'm being mm -hmm. a rebel, now I'm being brave. I think I just stayed a bit open. And that's how Denmark happened as well. Mm -hmm. Because um, I was living in Goa with my husband and uh, we decided, actually it was him who said, okay, I have been with work for 10 years and uh, I would like to, you know, get myself a new experience, kind of get, acquire some absolutely new skills. I see myself improving, but I really want to do something extraordinary now to push myself. So he's like, I'm thinking of doing an education. How about going abroad to Europe? And I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> so, you know, I went from Vivendi to going to Bombay to going to Goa. And now I was like, Denmark, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but then he got through the school and education in Denmark. And that's when I started looking at Denmark. I had no idea what I'm signing up for because <laughs> there are a lot of Indians who, ha who go to um, US and UK and Germany, but I didn't know many Indians who had been to Scandinavia. And uh, so it was, a blank canvas and we were taking a big risk but that's when I started looking for jobs because to be honest because I wanted to go with my husband <laughs> and and secondly as a designer we have always looked at the west for being more evolved in design just because you know design edu yeah. design education in India uh, in its formal form uh, is very is very young I mean we got independence in 1947 so you know it has so we've always looked up to the West for kind of, you know, being one step ahead. So I was like, this would be a fantastic learning experience for my husband through education. It would be amazing for me to get a job. And uh, that happened. So that's how we came to Denmark in 2014 in January in the dark, cold winter. Oh, my God. I could imagine what a wonderful welcome <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, j just on a side note, once I had colleagues from India coming to work in Siemens, they came in December they came in flip-flops. I think wow. they didn't have even like a winter coat. They just came from, you know, they entered the airport and they just came like this. I don't know if they didn't like, for if they forgot or didn't prepare mentally. And it was actually one of those winters when we had snow in Denmark in December. Right. And I remember first day taking them to Bilka. Right. And, you know, I think I actually lent them all of my scarves and hats and everything. But we went to Bilka because all of them had <laughs> to buy boots like right. sh some kind of shoes so i could imagine what a cultural and weather shock that would be yes. but i think we will continue that after a little song mm -hmm. so we will have a little bit of a break because guys you know fatima is just amazing storyteller hypnotizing us with a story half of the things she's saying i didn't have here i don't know i'm just sitting here and looking at her but i think you exactly need a glass of water and today we were trying to figure out some songs that make us feel courageous or brave and fatima have chosen the time of your life by green day welcome back after a break and this beautiful song to you've got five options show where 
we have Marta and Anna, like almost always, and we have our beautiful guest Fatema telling us this amazing, hypnotizing story of her life. And yeah, I'm just, you know, sitting here and <laughs> listening and waiting for more. Yes, ex exactly. And that's why we lost a little bit of a uh, track of the time because we had a little bit a uh, different schedule. But Fatima told me from the beginning, she's a freestyle uh, public speaker and storyteller. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, uh, let her say the story. And there was absolutely no way to cut it. Because, you know, when you hear when and she just builds the tension and, you know, there is a new thing coming out, there was no way to cut it. So uh, let's just pause on the fact that you came to Denmark and you had a cultural shock and then hopefully we will be able to say something about this while discussing the five facts about being courageous and social conditioning that we have prepared for today. And I've prepared five facts. So this is how it goes. I read the fact and you briefly say what your opinion is. Do we have a deal? Yep. Okay. So Marta, are you ready? Like I've never been before. <laughs> Fatima, are you ready? I am. <laughs> okay, those facts are always from the wise internet, but from different articles uh, and some of them more scientific than another. So the first fact is the society you are born in determines your character and personality to a huge extent. I think it has a big impact. I really do think so. It's not an impact that you cannot get out of, but I do believe that the country, the culture, the language have really large impact to us. Less to some and more to others. I think, yeah, I think I completely agree. Uh, like, I, like I said in the beginning, I, w I don't think I saw that I was being courageous. I was just born in a certain place and there were some conditions that were already ready-made around me. They were not in my control. And then, you know, what you can do is how to respond to that. But there's, I think it also forms your identity. So I think it's very important to uh, stay attached to mm -hmm. it as well. Yeah, de definitely. I actually am sometimes thinking, how would I be as a person if I were born in India? How would I be as a person if I were born in Congo? How would I be if I were born in China? Uh, uh, and, you know, I cannot predict because I think my personality is so unique to me because it's mine. But actually, in the end of the day, it's a very interesting question for our listeners and for you to imagine yourself being born in a completely different culture. But then I have a very interesting yet another quote or fact about society. What do you think about this? Society is a great structure if you want to be an average person. Whoa, that blew my mind. I think this is unfortunately true. Don't get me wrong. I also do respect societies and I do believe that society builds the safety network for us as well. And I am far away from saying that society is a bad thing or nothing, nothing wrong, bad or anything in that. But I do believe that once you want to step out of that social conditioning, it makes it difficult for you. So the uniqueness part and taking another path it's, it's quite difficult in some societies, more easy in others, but still I think there is a lot of good to society. But like every single thing in, in this world, there are some pros and cons and some things that are beautiful and less beautiful about yeah. it. I totally agree. I think we have to acknowledge that we are part of the society. So when we say society, society is not something that lives outside you. You are in it. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, whatever our impression of a society is, uh, I mean, we need to take responsibility for what it is. And mm -hmm. uh, I think people reflect society and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I would not disrespect the idea or notion of society. of society. I think what is interesting to be aware of is conformity. So and it and it comes down to simple majority, right? Because when it becomes a society thing, so then it's like, if majority of people think this is the right thing and that is the wrong thing, then this must be the right thing. And I think we just have to remember that we as humans have intelligence and we have the opportunity to seek knowledge if we want to. So it's just about questioning sometimes uh, whether what you're being told is right and wrong, if that is the case. And if something within you, outside you, kind of hints that maybe there's another truth outside, then go explore it. 
Yeah, I, I think this is a good way to put it. I probably, it's not like I'm disrespectful towards the society because I am a part of it, but I always had a feeling that society has more influence or impact on us yes. than, than we would like to admit. And uh, society is sometimes ruthless with trying to put people to the same level or, or way of living. I will just continue with this quote and I will close it. So you can all reflect because this will be something and this is by a guy who wrote an article, Salvador Brigman. So he wrote that society is a great structure if you want to be an average person. You're taught to write in a certain way, think in a certain way and conduct yourself in such a way that employers will find you attractive. High school is designed to get you into college. College is designed to get you hired or sell you on a value of getting another degree. You are taught that education is the path to a happy suburban life. Just pile up on the degrees and you're guaranteed to make more money. Is there anything wrong with this? No, not really. You're making a lot of people rich by following this path. Universities, banks, insurance companies, employers, financial advisors and mutual people around you. I was in a way slightly blown away when I read it. I wish we could make a show about only this topic at one point, but just the first impression that you had after, after I read it. Well, for me, already the first part that you talk about, that it's made to make you average, that was already what blew me away uh, because of its, you know, impact. So for me, they are kind of, you know, the same. Uh, it's the same thing for me, the same impact on both. Yeah, yeah. I think it, we must acknowledge that Let's say society does make it hard to be an outcast. Yeah. But any community makes it hard to be an outcast. I think that's the problem. It's not yeah. what society is and isn't. I think yeah. it's whether it's open to let you question or think differently or not. Mm -hmm. I will just tell you that this quote or this article actually ended up in a mm -hmm. quite positive, bittersweet note. And it's okay because not everyone yeah. can be entrepreneur. Not everyone wants to be a rebel, a thinker. Some people want to be average. Some people want to have a comfortable life. So that's okay. And if we will all be forced by society to be entrepreneurial, many of us would fail because we don't have what it takes or we are not interested. So there was a bitter sweet ending to it. But I, I really like this article. Okay, I have another fact for you. And this is about courage. Courageous people believe in themselves. They know who they are and what they stand for. Do I have to uh, comment first <laughs> or maybe this time? No, it's <laughs> like I, I, I could give that a try. So I think I've said this before, but like I don't picture myself as this macho, courageous person. Mm -hmm. I'm super vulnerable uh, and I am very self-analytical and I'm very unsure. So I just give you my story. But do I feel like the most proud person? I mean, a lot of decisions that I've taken could be wrong from some perspective, could be right from some other perspective. Like just by coming from India to Denmark, Denmark society or thinking and culture is extremely different from an Indian. And it has just given me a more open view into the Indian society. I'm able to look at the Indian society and my culture a bit more objectively. And at the same time, look at the Danish culture more objectively. But it's not to judge. I think for me, it was interesting that such two different cultures can still exist in the same time. Yeah. At the same time. Isn't that fascinating? It, it is fascinating. But I, I think it, although I might be wrong, when you are not believing in yourself, when you don't know what you stand for, it is way more difficult. And it really, I think it's really regardless if it's a Danish culture, which also have some strict yeah, yeah. rules or Indian culture, to resist if you don't know who you are and you don't believe that you can make it if you don't have that self-confidence then the courage is simply not there and I, I that would be my statement Marta you are looking so I always have this uh, challenge when it comes to uh, self-confidence mm -hmm. self-worthiness and like being courageous and so on because and this believing in myself I have actually been looking out for it because I haven't had it, this, you know, real belief and this who I really am. Yet some of the things I do, other people evaluate as courageous. So I'm not, I think we are a work in progress 
and we are, you know, working on it. And so, for example, I'm only working on believing in myself and I'm working on my, I think self-confidence is fine, but the self-worthiness is, for example, something that I have been working on. So, yeah, that's more like I'm still capable of taking some of those decisions that people evaluate as courageous, even though I am not entirely that fact. <laughs> I, th I think I have to second what you said, because I think the way I look at it is I just I just allow myself that, OK, right now, what feels right to do? Mm -hmm. And I try and do that. And I, I I'm trying to cultivate that confidence or trust in myself that trust what I'm feeling is the right thing to do right now. It might be something else tomorrow. <laughs> and yeah. it, it might, it was probably something else five years back, but we evolve and I think we need to understand that we evolve and accept that. So it's, it's this question as to what is it that you think is right based on who you are right now. Yes, I also- And then follow it. I also agree with that because if we look at our lives and the whole lifespan, of course it becomes relative depending when we are. But Marta, I think you will then like the second quote because actually I put them quote to quote, they are from different sources. Courageous people are just as shy, anxious and afraid as you and I. It just happens that throughout their life they made a lot of small courageous choices which added up and now they are all we remember. So this was actually something that I thought it's, it's either complementary or even a bit contradictory because you know, if you are a courageous person, it means you know who you are, you stand. But no, sometimes courage is just little acts of courage. And you can be as anxious and afraid and shy as you could imagine. But if you have that guts or you do what's right once in a while, this is how I understand it. What do you think, Marta? Well, I, I really love the way, Fatima, you started, you know, explaining how you see yourself. And this, you know, relation that you have to being here in this show as being courageous. And I think your introduction and your story and your beautiful, humble authenticity is exactly, you know, this beautiful living fact, <laughs> so <laughs> to speak, of that fifth uh, fact. That was fourth, but fifth it, will... Yes. We're only on four? Okay. My yes. mathematics is not necessarily <laughs> the one that is with me. Uh, yes, and my, my time management also looks like is <laughs> really lacking. I will just have one last before the song and, and the results of the survey. Uh, that is dedicated to Fatima. And I think we got an answer already. But just to say that apparently we tell up telepathically connected somehow. So the fact was the fifth one, because we have a guest from India. In India, education and academics have been the traditional focal points of stress and parental pressure for children to excel in their studies has been unusually high. Uh, yes, that is true. And uh, I think it, ha it changes generation to generation. So there's this beautiful trend. So I think, for example, a generation of two back uh, the mindset towards this was much more traditional because, you know, you probably got an education and then you got to that one job and you stuck to that one job the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that truly determined the quality of your life and your children's life. Mm -hmm. Because it's a country where, you know, we don't have the social welfare like the way Denmark is. It really depends. So how hard you work and how much you achieve is directly proportionate to the quality of your life. And uh, that is, it completely changes the equation. So we are all running in India. You have to, it's almost like that. And because, I mean, there's nothing romantic about poverty. I know people talk about that, blah, 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 but it's not. I mean, especially yeah. when you have few resources and you have to compete for it. It's just a thing you do. So I totally understand why it happens. But I have recognized that people from my generation who now have children have a different mindset. Yeah. They want their kids to play more. They want their kids to enjoy their life more. And they are very mindful of making sure they observe, let the kids explore different things. Yeah. I, let, let the kid identify what they like. And if my kid is into cricket, I want him to become a cricketer when he grows up. So I think with education, with exposure, and with also an economy that's growing really, really fast, that's changing. Okay, and I actually think it's uh, great news because uh, 
I think any kind of pressure, including parental, can be extremely sp stressful and very disliberating. And with that very uh, pessimistic and yet optimistic in the same time thought, because it's changing, I would like to invite you all to listen to How Far I'll Go uh, from I Am Mona. That's a second choice by Fatima. And we will be back after a very short break. Hello, back again after this beautiful song and back in You've Got Five Options show with Anna and Marta and our special guest Fatema. Yes, and as you know, it is our little tradition that by the very end we are revealing this, the results of the great Facebook survey that we are making. So we have asked you this week five questions about being rebellious, courageous and pressure from the family or society. And we have received some answers. And of course, we will present the survey results, but we will also ask Fatima what are her special answers. So the first question we have asked our listeners was, how rebellious are you? And I think I will first tell you what won, because we gave them options. 59% of people said that depends on the situation. When it comes to the things I really care for, I can be pretty rebellious. But then again, 17% of the respondents answered, I'm a person that prefers to live a conflict-free, simple life so I conform to norms and rules. And then we have three answers that got the same amount of voice, uh, votes, it was 8%, and that was rebellious is my second name. I wish I could be more rebellious, but I lack courage, and I think I'm getting more and more rebellious with time. I started to be aware that some rules make no sense, and I am getting more confident to express my disagreement. So those were the results. Fatima, what would be your preferred answer? I think I would second uh, what we what the majority says. Like I said, that I I think I have to really be true to what what is what is the situation right now, and wh what do I really care about? So yeah. I think the way I look at it is I just try to be very honest about it. And then if it's worth fighting for, then I fight. Yeah, I think you actually mentioned something like it's stupid to be rebellious for the sake of being rebellious. And I think that this is exactly what, what I understood, that this is your approach. But then the second question was, uh, have you ever made a decision because of family's pressure or social conditioning? And the answer that won was 72% of respondents said, I try to balance it. I take their opinions, family opinions or social opinions into consideration, but the final decision is on me. That is 72%. That is way above half. But then we also have 14% said, ha ha, no way. I know how to live my life. And then there were two answers that got the same amount. It was 7% each. Yes, I did in the past and I regret it now, so I listen to my own wisdom. And then, yes, but only to have them off my back. So basically just agreeing to what they say so they will stop complaining. Where are you in this wonderful pool of votes, Fatima? I think you can hear it from my story that I think we all navigate on this scale at different points of time in life. I'm sure if there was an age marking on that, it could have revealed some pattern. It could be. But... Uh, at least in my case, you have heard that, you know, early in my life when I don't think I, I, I had not really understood myself as an adult and who I am as an individual and what do I stand for, blah, blah, blah. I think I was much more influenced by family and society, societal wishes. But as I grow older, I think I would agree with the majority and I look for balance. Like I said, I'm not like uh, a hipster who like, you know, <laughs> uh, just want to say like, you know, whatever. I don't abide with you, society, and blah, blah, blah. I think I acknowledge it. It's important. Uh, and I have tremendous and huge respect for my family. Uh, it's a very important part of my life. So I'll never do something in spite of them completely. But like, yeah, I would look for a balance. I would definitely consider them. Then I'm definitely curious what you will answer to number question number three. And actually, Marta, I also want to hear your answer on this one. Have you ever chosen an education, career, life partner, or a place to live in spite of your family's wish. And 40%, there were actually two answers that got the same amount of votes. 40% of people said, I don't need to. My family stands by my choices no, no matter what they are. 
and the other 30% said in some cases when I am 100% sure of my decision, yes. In some other situations, especially when I feel insecure, I get influenced by my family quite easy. There was also 20% of the respondents who answer, yes, but that's because I don't care what my family thinks. At the end of the day, it's my life, not theirs. There were a couple of rebellious people <laughs> here, you know, they were like really like, it's my second name, screw family and stuff. But basically, have you ever made a decision in spite of your family regarding a very big choices? So I think we know already about you, Fatima, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, about yes. your story. Well, for me, I would say that I could even say like my family would actually push me to take decisions, you know, like my mom was really working on me for me to go to Denmark. Mm -hmm. Like I would actually like to stay with my friends and my boyfriend and so on. And my mom would actually be like, come on, child, go, <laughs> you know, explore the world and so on. And once my parents, they have actually forced me into an education I didn't want to go to, which from perspective of time was the absolutely best thing that happened in my life or one of the absolute, I think my children, my husband could compete with this <laughs> one. But the thing is that they actually forced me to go to a high school class, which was with English. Uh, language. I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to the class with my friends. And actually, that's how I met Anna. She was in that class. And we have been best friends since. And that high level of English has opened so many doors that's for true. me and that I could travel the world and so on. So I think my family is actually the one that has forced me into being more, you know, open and courageous and stuff. Okay, that, that's an interesting spin to it. So I wonder what you will say about the fourth one, which is going a little bit from the family into a totally different topic there was something in your story that i paid attention to we didn't manage to cover it but now you have a chance to say yes no or whatever have you ever met a person whose random advice made you rethink your life's direction and 39 percent said yes and not even once 23 percent of people said haha no i think this happens only in the movies then 15% said, no, not really, but I would love to meet someone like that. And the same 15, per not the different 15% said, I'm not sure. And then 8% said, yes, once. There is not even one person who has responded that no, and they think it's a sign of weakness to be influenced by a stranger. So that's a good sign. But have you ever met a person whose random advice made you rethink your life's direction? I think I can't recall one person. I would say I have met many people like that who have touched mm -hmm. me. I mean, when we look at like, you know, p r ad random advice from people we've met, uh, I think it can be looked at two ways. So there are some people that we didn't get to choose. So the family you were born with, for example. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the people we have met, I mean, they are random people. Like, let's say friends, let's say colleagues. Uh, let's say now I'm in a different country and I have like friends from all over the world and I'm super happy and excited. So there's a lot of advice uh, coming from them or a lo lot of things that they say sometimes that make me reflect about my life in a complete different manner. Like right now on this show, I'm this random person <laughs> sharing mm -hmm. my story. and I don't know if it strikes a chord with somebody else out there. <laughs> That's a good point. Who can probably relate to my story mm -hmm. in a different way. I personally get a lot of energy and inspiration from people. So I'm a very people person. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm, I, I like to listen, uh, I would say. So I'm very open to advice. Uh, of course, you have to apply it to your life and then see if it makes sense and if it stimulates or inspires you to go in a certain direction and take a decision. And I owe it. Whatever I have done in my life, I wouldn't take credit for it myself. There have been so many amazing people that happened to come in my life in some way or the other. Uh, some that have I've had the benefit of having very close to me, my husband, my family, yeah. uh, and some that I just met. Uh, you know, the universe sent them to me. <laughs> like I met you guys today. <laughs> well, we, we like to be seen as a gift from the universe. How about you, Marta? 
I think that you don't have enough time to hear my answer. <laughs> so just say yes or no. I, I don't remember if I should say yes or no. I don't remember <laughs> how the uh, how the question was formulated. Have you ever met a random person who has yes. advice? Yes. Yes. And the last question, and guys, we will be off from air in two minutes, but we will just hit with this one. Have you ever made a life-changing decision spontaneously? 39% said yes and not even once. 31% said yes, but I realized it was life-changing only from a perspective of time. 15% said no, I am not a spontaneous type to begin with. And 15% said yes once. And you ladies? I think I'm an overthinker. So I would not I would not call myself spontaneous, especially when taking life changing decisions. But what I have definitely been is open because if I had to really design and plan things I have done in my life, I would have been in a very different place. So a lot of times there were choices that I made that I hadn't planned or designed. So I had to be open to doing or considering something I would have never dreamt of. Okay, and Marta, how about you? Yeah, so uh, definitely I do think a lot when taking life decisions, but I have had those turning points where I have been able to take a decision in a, you know, in a spite of a moment because it just felt so right. Okay, so I think that I would say yes. But they were spontaneous, but they were life changing decisions only from the perspective of time. So, guys, we will be off air in a moment. We will say goodbye with a song that I actually find as a very ins inspiring for courage. This is Eye of the Tiger. Thank you very much for being here, Fatima. Thank you so much. Thank I've you. had a blast. Thank you very much, Marta, for co hosting. And, guys, we will hear each other in Friday in two weeks. <laughs> You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.youvegot5options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app.